The hundreds of protesters marched through Bemidji tonight to show support for the protest at the Standing Rock Reservation. The final permits for the Dakota Access Pipeline were issued in July by the Army Corps of Engineers, which sparked the protest. Mel Meyer has more. About 300 protesters gathered in Library Park as a sign of support for Standing Rock. The protest in North Dakota has been described as the largest gathering of indigenous people ever. I think that this is kind of a turning point for indigenous people all over the world and they're kind of coming together to protect our land. One of the members of Standing Rock marched with the protesters through the town. She expressed frustration over the project and concern for what the pipeline could lead to. Everyone is always saying um, pipelines run our life now. It, it, it doesn't. That doesn't mean add more to it. That does not mean continue adding more pipelines and pipelines because you think that's okay. The protesters ended the march at Bemidji State to hear from advocacy groups and community members. Our planet, what's going on in Standing Rock, what's going on with our native people, it's, it's bigger than any one of us. Obviously, it's touched everybody here and, uh, and many others as well. The protesters at Standing Rock and here in Bemidji have expressed concern that if an oil spill were to occur, that it could contaminate their water sources. Just a couple of housekeeping things. Last week, Enbridge officials met with local public safety agencies in Hubbard County to create a pipeline emergency plan. The county does not currently have a multi-agency plan should one of the five buried oil pipelines in the county burst. You no, know, I touch bases with my emergency manager, but as far as on a large scale effort, you know, we do not do, you know, a lot of that. Motions filed during the Line 3 regulatory process cite the Kalamazoo River oil spill, which was not responded to for at least 17 hours after the pipeline had burst. Line 3, if it's approved and goes ahead, gets pressure transmitters on each side of the valve, which legacy pipelines uh, don't have that in every position yet. Enbridge officials say they've held five similar meetings this year. We're trying to touch out to a broader audience to build a, a larger knowledge base on how to respond. For Lakeland News, I'm Mal Meyer. Homeland Security, Greater Northwest EMS, and the Northwest Hospital Coalition partnered with Enbridge to hold that workshop. If you've enjoyed this segment of Lakeland News, please consider making a tax-deductible contribution to Lakeland Public Television.